Well, welcome back to our Read Through the Bible. Today we're picking up in Jeremiah chapter 4. Now, as we're picking up in Jeremiah chapter 4, let's just review a moment. Jeremiah is prophesying to the southern kingdom, and his ministry lasts, prophetic ministry lasts, from 627 B.C., the 13th year of the reign of the good king Josiah, to the end of the existence of the southern kingdom of Judah uh, before the Babylonian exile and the destruction of the temple and the final destruction of Jerusalem takes place in 586 B.C. Although Josiah, the first king that he prophesies under is good, the last four will be evil. And so Jeremiah is here delivering these messages. He'll deliver 14 of these. And we're picking up in chapter 4 in the middle of his second message on repentance, encouraging the people to repent. Uh, The first few verses, again, he's calling for Jerusalem and Judah to repent. Um, Judgment is coming from Babylon. I'm bringing evil from the north, speaking of the geographic location of Babylon, north and um, also to the east of Jerusalem. Here he says, from the north, I'm bringing this evil, referring into Babylon. But Jeremiah is somewhat confused because God has promised in his covenants a great and glorious future and that there will eventually be peace. But he's confused. And he says, whereas you have talked about peace, a sword touches the throat. So God goes on to tell Jeremiah, the present judgment does not nullify the promises of the covenants that I have made with Israel. That's a good point for us to remember, that that the present problem does not nullify God's faithfulness. Um, In verses 14 through 18, Jeremiah continues to call for repentance. Um, Wash your heart from evil, O Jerusalem, that you may be saved. Uh, Babylon's on the way. And your evil has brought this on you. In verses 19 and following, Jeremiah laments the coming destruction. The whole land is devastated. My people are foolish because they do not know me. In other words, turn to me and I could help you, but you don't. Um, Jeremiah actually has a vision of the Babylonian destruction. The mountains quake. Cities are pulled down. But the Lord says, I will not execute a complete destruction. Again, all throughout the Bible, as you read these prophets, as, as this destruction is coming, there are hints of the fact that God will bring them back. And in Jeremiah chapter 5, this uh, call to repentance, this sermon continues. Uh, and the Lord says, If you have one righteous, I will pardon you. Uh, kind of reminds us of the whole scenario of... Um, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah there, Sodom in particular. But um, anyway, they have refused to repent, he says. Therefore, a lion from the forest will slay them. And this lion is symbolically referring to Babylon. Um, Jeremiah pictures the Lord ordering this Babylonian judgment. Um, But again, it's not going to be a complete destruction because he's going to preserve this remnant. Um, Verse 10, go through the vine rows and destroy, but do not execute a complete destruction. God is going to preserve his nation. His covenants, he is faithful. Um, And even though Israel is not faithful in her covenantal response, as we'll see in the next message, God is faithful. Um, He says in verse 19, I'm making Jeremiah's words like fire. In other words, God is going to allow Jeremiah's words. They won't be able to resist his words, even though he's going to suffer greatly and have many threats. Uh, Jeremiah, you'll see this. God is faithful. God calls Judah a foolish and senseless people. Um, Their houses are full of deceit, he says. Look at them. They lie. The prophets lie. The priests rule on their own authority, and my people love it. You know, the leaders are lying. You know, kind of the whole concept of seeking for yourself preachers that are telling you what you want to hear. But he asks this question at the close of um, chapter 5. But what will you do at the end of it? You know, you you reject, you want to hear what you want to hear, but what's going to be the end of it? That's the question for America. What's going to happen at the end, okay? And then in Jeremiah chapter 6, he continues this message on repentance. Um, Evil looks down from the north, telling um, the people of Jerusalem, Babylon is coming, but 
Jerusalem still refuses to repent. Um, and in verse 10, Jeremiah says of chapter 6, Behold, their ears are closed. They can't listen. The word of the Lord has become a reproach to them. They don't want to hear, hear from God. Um, and again, verse 13, the problem is the spiritual leaders. Um, everyone's greedy. From the prophet to the priest, they lie, saying, peace, peace, and there is no peace. Now remember, God had promised an ultimate peace, but now they're in the short run saying, we're going to have peace. God's going to take care of us. Maybe it'll be like you know, when the Assyrians came you know, almost 100 years ago. God will intervene. Well, this time there will be no intervention because there is no repentance. And they had the warnings of what had happened to the northern kingdom, to Samaria. Um, their sin is so bad, in verse 15, he says, they don't even know how to blush. Um, verse 16 is interesting. Ask for the ancient past, the good way of walking. You know, remember the law of God? Let's follow this. But there is no desire to follow God's law. Kind of sounds like America today. And they said, we will not walk in it. And he says, the Lord does, I am bringing disaster on this people because they have not listened to my words. And Jeremiah is, is kind of a tester of people, this kind of assayer of silver and gold, one that finds out, are they genuine? Is their faith real? Um, and God's always testing us, is he not? Um, Satan's trying to tempt, God is testing us to righteousness. Well, in uh, chapter 7, Jeremiah begins his third sermon. This is often referred to as a temple sermon because he goes up to the temple to deliver this sermon. Uh, and he said, stand at the gate of the house of the Lord, and calling the people, God tells Jeremiah, stand at the gate of the house, Lord, go up to the temple, stand at the entrance of the temple, and tell the people to repent of sin. Um, don't think that this temple, just because you have this physical temple here, is going to save you. You know, America just don't think because you have churches on every corner, that's going to save you. You know, that's not going to work because God tests the hearts. He knows what's in the heart. And he goes on in verses 5 through 7, If you truly repent, I will let you dwell in this place. But you're trusting lying words. You have these prophets and priests who are telling you what you want to hear, but you're not listening. Don't sin and worship the true gods. Don't sin, but turn and worship the true God, I should say. Uh, and in verse 12, he said, Just like the Philistines did to the ark, so Babylon will do the temple. Remember how the Philistines came and took the ark of the covenant back um, uh, further back in the, in the Old Testament um, uh, during the days of Eli, you know, they, they took the ark and, and it was taken. Remember, Eli falls back and dies when he gets the message of that. Remember what happened then to the ark of the covenant? The same thing is going to happen to this temple. Jericho, and Jeremiah is commanded here, it's interesting, do not pray for these people. And that's going to be a continuation. Their idolatry and their immorality continue. There comes a time when God says, don't even pray. Um, I've actually experienced that once or twice when God says, don't even say another word about me. You know, kind of don't cast your pearls before swine. Um, if they would listen to my voice, but they will not listen. So Jeremiah is told, they're not going to listen to you. They don't listen to me. Um, and Jeremiah is told to give a sign, cut off your hair and throw it away from you as a symbol of the fact that I'm throwing Judah and Jerusalem away from me. And so Babylon's judgment is coming, and it's going to be very great. Um, chapter 8 continues this temple sermon. The Babylonians will even destroy and desecrate the groves. Uh, you know, they had all these false gods, and the Babylonians didn't know, you know, who was the true god, who was the false god. So they go through the land, they destroy all these, these false places of worship, which was a good thing, um, but they even bring the bones out of the people uh, that, are, that are buried that, that worship these gods, and they expose them. It's a total devastation. Um, and he said, the living remnant will desire death. This is how bad it's going to be. Um, but they still refuse to repent. No man has repented of his wickedness, he goes on to say. And in verse eight, uh, excuse me, chapter 8, verses 8 through 12, he goes on to say this. Um, they thought they were wise, but the prophet, the priest, and the scribe led them away. You know, America's preachers, are, we're not preaching against sin. We're not preaching the hope in Jesus Christ. We're leading this nation astray, and it's on us. It's on us. Um, in opposition to the lying preachers, God's judgment is certain. Um, Jeremiah is brokenhearted, and it's almost as if he can hear the people in exile here as he closes chapter 8. The cry of the daughter of my people from a distant land. You know, this, this exile is coming, and it's almost as if he can hear it. Um, in chapter 9, Jeremiah laments Jerusalem's sin again. Um, 
He's the weeping prophet crying. Uh, and he said, oh, I, you know, we've all felt what Jeremiah is saying in verse 2. A wayfarer's lodging place in the wilderness. I wish I had a place that I could, could go and hide in the wilderness, he said. Um, kind of, you know, you ever felt that way? I wish I had some little house I could go to and, and stay there and just study my Bible. Well, Jeremiah felt this way, you know. And they proceed from evil to evil. They don't know the Lord. All of them are lying deceivers, God says, and I will judge them. And the reason for judgment is because they don't keep God's law. They don't follow his word. Um, and so this judgment is coming, and, and it goes on and on. Well, as you come into um, uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, we come to the third uh, message, uh, the continuation of this third message, the temple message, the last chapter is going to talk about this, this temple message again. Uh, this message of repentance, turn to God, and he's there in the temple, continues. Um, Jerusalem makes idols, um, and Jeremiah mocks the idols. They're br even bringing idols, remember this, into the temple. Uh, you know, you need to turn away from these. In verses 8 and 9, stupid people make idols. Well, this is when you reject God, you become stupid. Um, Jeremiah describes the reason for this pitiful state of things, this pitiful state that, that Jerusalem finds herself in. For the shepherds have become stupid and all the flock is scattered. Again, the problem always goes back to the preachers, the teachers, the leaders. You know, when you have bad leaders, you have problems coming. Uh, and so Jeremiah closes the temple sermon asking God to correct Judah and the wicked nations, for example, Babylon in particular, to be judged. And Wouldn't that be great if, if we would repent and the wicked would be judged, but chastisement will come on the righteous, judgment will come on the righteous if we reject God? Well, in chapter 11, we come into the fourth message, and, and, and this message is going to run for three chapters, 11, 12, and 13. And, and this, Jeremiah is talking about the fact that Judah has broken God's covenant. Now, the covenants, by and large, um, are dependent upon God. In other words, they're, they're not conditional. The, um, the Mosaic law, the Mosaic covenant is certainly conditional, but the, uh, some of the big covenants, um, the Davidic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, they are conditional upon God. But nevertheless, because Jerusalem has been unfaithful, what God has said would happen is happening to them. You've broken the covenant. And so he says, God to Jeremiah, hear my words and speak to Judah and Jerusalem. Cursed is the man who does not heed the words of this covenant. And very true, you know, it's kind of going back again to the, the Mosaic Covenant. You know, think of the two mountains, the mountain of blessing, the mountain of cursing. Cursing is the man who's not heed the words of this covenant. In idolatry and disobedience, you have rejected me. Uh, the house of, of Israel and Judah have broken my covenant that I made with their fathers. Again, this is probably referring to the Mosaic Covenant. Judgment is coming. I will no longer listen to their prayers. Uh, their many idols will not help them. And then, in fact, in verses 14 through 17 of Jeremiah 11, Jeremiah is told three times not to pray for unrepentant Judah and Jerusalem. This is bad. You know, if, if we don't have somebody praying for us, think of how bad it is. Do you value the prayers of those that are praying for you? Well, this is the judgment. And then in verses 18 through 23, Jeremiah is warned by God that the men from Anathoth, his hometown, are conspiring to kill him. Jeremiah prayed, and God delivers Jeremiah. And then Jeremiah 12, uh, this message of the broken covenant continues. The last chapter we're going to look at today, uh, Jeremiah prays, why do the wicked prosper? And God's response says, I'm, I'm testing you. I'm making you stronger. And he uses this tremendous verse, if footmen tire you out, how will you compete with horses? In other words, hang in there tough, Jeremiah, because I'm preparing you for an even greater ministry. A lot of times we see this. How we handle the small things will, by and large, depend on how much God can trust us with. Um, God says, I've forsaken my house because of the sin. Verse 12, for a sword of the Lord is devouring, but... God will eventually destroy the Gentile nations, Babylon. And then God goes on uh, through Jeremiah here in the last couple of verses of chapter 12 to speak of the return, the millennial reign. But the Gentiles will have a future hope. That means during the millennial reign when the Gentiles will come and worship. So he closes on this concept, yes, this is a problem, but in the future, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, is coming. May God bless 
the reading of his word.